Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to generate side income, independent income, or passive income, yes, that means making money while you sleep, to simply reorganize your day to get things done that are meaningful to you, in essence, if you want to find the freedom in or out of your current job, then do we have the show for you. Today we'll be talking with freedompreneur Steve Scott. I'm not sure if he's ever been called that before, <laughs> but he's built a life of freedom for himself and through his books shows you how you can do it as well. He's the serial author of well over 40 Kindles and makes more money in a month than many people do in a year. Equally impressive, he's found a way to organize his life and his habits to write almost a book a month. So today I want to talk about habit forming, passive income, and finding freedom. How we build the habits and daily routine that set us free and ways we can make money on the side or as a main goal to set ourselves free. So welcome to the show, Steve. Are you ready to shine? Absolutely. Uh, it's Monday morning, so I always love Monday. So I like kind of getting up and starting my business. So yeah, I'm definitely ready to rock. All right. Well, then a Monday morning. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so um, before I dive into things, I see the medals in the background there. Some some looks like marathons uh, and the like. Yes. And I've heard that you get your best ideas while running. Is this true? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I do... I would say 80% of the time I carry my phone with me to uh, usually listen to a podcast and mm -hmm. I find that uh, the podcast kind of leads to one thought. So it's not really the best for running, but sometimes I'll just stop, sit, uh, pop something in Evernote and just make sure I just record that idea so it just doesn't go like he's uh, kind of in the pre-interview, you said squirrel, so it just doesn't leave my mind and go in another direction. So yeah, I try yep. not to break when I run to get my ideas down, but but I like your idea because I'll end up coming up with, what is it, an, an acronym? Like... Uh, 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 I'll always bring cookies ABC and so if I get more than three ideas in a run as I'm going along going ABC 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 oh that's the worst I've definitely done that <laughs> you're going I don't have room for one more but it's here anyway <laughs> yeah no I, I constantly like I, I just firmly believe that you always should write stuff down because like I don't know about you, but you probably get dozens of ideas a day. And if you're not just processing them on a regular basis, they just go in your mind and then right back out the other end. I do. And, and it's really, um, it, it's, it's a good problem to have, I guess, that you have a lot of great ideas. But when you're constantly going, it's hard to, and, and I take a lot of pause times, but it's hard to get back to them. So, yeah. so you really want to grab them before, when, when the intuition strikes. Definitely. So, so let's jump into things here. I, I want to understand you've been incredibly successful at Kindles, but you weren't always writing books, were you? Uh, no, I would say I pretty much have been running some form of a self-publishing business for about, I'm sorry, some form of an online business now for about, I think it's 12 years at this point. Mm -hmm. And I would say that for the most part about eight or nine years of that, I did affiliate marketing where I did a little bit of writing, but it wasn't necessarily so writing intensive. But it wasn't until I started a blog in 2010 that I really just kind of started building the writing habit. And really, I started focusing, uh, trolling down, making sure I was doing it on a daily basis. That was somewhere around uh, late 2012. So pretty much since then, I've been writing almost on a consistent basis. But I kind of had to teach myself a lot of the craft and kind of the, the mindset of doing it on a daily basis. So as for on a daily basis, were you setting a specific time then every day that, that is your, your writing hours? or? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm sure we'll get into the, to the, uh, yeah. that later on in, in the episode as far as um, morning routine. But I do, I do my morning routine. And pretty much as soon as I finish my morning routine, I would sit down and write for about an hour. Now, this is I slightly break the, broke this rule the past uh, couple of months because I've been focusing on a product, a product launch, a video course. So instead of writing every single day, I just kind of substituted that with just creating videos every single day. But kind of the, what I've learned is just when you wake up first thing in the morning, focus on the most important activity and get that out of the way. That's really the, like the best way to start the day. That makes perfect sense. I say for myself, I have what I call my 4CC, which is 4 o'clock content creation. I like so, that. Uh, so I try to remember myself every day is the SMP, what's my single-minded purpose for the day, and try to get my 4CC, my content creation. Because if you get your content creation in first thing, then no matter what else comes, and everything else will come, um, you've, got, you, you've, you've put money in the bank, so to speak. Definitely. No, I, I love that idea. The fact that you, you have a, a specific allotted time, almost like a schedule on your calendar, just focusing on the one thing you know will actually will really do, uh, do good things for your business. And the trick for myself is then having numerous alarms and tripwires and systems <laughs> to get myself to bed at night so that I'm clear-brained for my 4 a.m. slot. 
that's no, oh, that's that's great. So wait, what what is your nighttime schedule sound like? <laughs> My nighttime schedule is actually really rough since we started the show. Um, I've we I've uh, reined it in quite a bit, and compared to a lot of people out there, it's doing well. The challenge is, as a daily show, we have to have uh, our shows, obviously, uploaded each day, which means that we have to have our shows edited each day. And so I have a uh, a cutoff time of about 4 p.m. where I get to jump into the daily edits. Mm -hmm. And then I work into the daily edits for an hour or two. Then I start to work on, on uploads and titling and information for the show and get all that done. And I shoot for 7 p.m. because 7 p.m. is Greenwich Mean Time Zero. And uh, over a third of our audience is uh, outside of the U.S. Oh, okay. So, so there are a lot of people who are waiting for that show to go to work in Asia or a few hours later who will be uh, going to work in the U.K. And so I shoot for getting it done by 7 o'clock. Now, uh, 7 o'clock may actually spill over to 7.30 or 8. And 8 is supposed to be my bedtime. And so that's where we can run into some challenges. <laughs> yeah, per I can see that, yeah. Particularly if... While I'm not, um, I'm very good about not being an emailaholic. Um, there are um, guests who are um, getting back to you about guest requests. They needed um, um, calendar scheduling right away. More importantly, maybe you've got a guest who's going to be on the show tomorrow. They have some last minute questions. So you may have some things to take care of. And so it becomes a really, um, well, I was watching this morning while I was at the gym, um, Castaway with Tom mm -hmm. Hanks. That's and, a good one. I like that. Yeah. In, in the beginning, you know, he's in Russia and he's telling them, you know, showing them this giant clock <laughs> and telling them how every minute matters. And, and there's a part of me that's intuitive. I'm very meditative, very contemplative and like to take quiet time. Conversely, I need a certain amount of, I won't use the word rigidity, but a certain amount of dancing with that clock to make sure that everything gets done with the pace that will allow me to get to sleep. And I've come a long way. When we started the show, um, then I was getting to bed somewhere between 12 and 3 in the morning. And, and then it was, it was a magnificent accomplishment when I was hitting midnight. And, and then 10 p.m. and 9 p.m. And now on the days I do make it by 8 p.m., I am like, hurrah. Because <laughs> it, it means not only will I get the content creation done the next day, but I'll have my best work because I'll be the clearest of mind. Yeah, that makes sense. If you're, if you're getting more sleep, you obviously would have... I, I find myself when I'm when I get very little sleep the night before I, I can barely th uh, put two thoughts together, let alone try to write or uh, create something high level. I, exactly, and and in the nighttime, what I found, and many people may have experienced this as well, we get we stay up late to get a lot done, but for most people, not all. And and I've written a book at night, so I understand it's not all of us. Um, but there is a a, a point of diminished returns. And so for myself, after somewhere around 7, 8 o'clock, that one task that I need to get done that during daylight hours would have taken an hour is now going to take four hours. Yeah. <laughs> and the trick is to cut your losses at that point and say, okay, this just has to get done as long as it's not an upload. Daily show. That you gotta <laughs> you got to push through. Yeah, I've learned that myself where if it's just something's not happening, it's okay to kind of get up, walk away, do something else, do something completely unrelated to that, just kind of switch. What I find if it's a high-level task, you would switch over to uh, something that really just doesn't require a lot of brain power, like answering email or responding to uh, some content you've created just to, to people that follow you. So it, it sometimes it's just, it is best just to take that kind of just, all right, this is just not working right now. Let me just move on to something else. Exactly. So going back to your Kindles here, um, when you started writing them, if I understand, you were just taking that same routine or that same horsepower that you were doing in blogging and yes. putting it over to your books. Yeah, pretty much I made the decision that as soon as I saw that the uh, Kindle, the self-publishing stuff was actually working, uh, this was after my second book, I, I realized that instead of investing all this time, I, I, at one point I blocked every single day of, of the year. Um, obviously, it's not quite as uh, labor intensive as creating a daily podcast, but you know, it took like an hour, two hours for even a small blog post. So instead of uh, creating blog content every single day, I would just focus that energy into uh, creating books. And when I first got started, I was at the point where I was able to uh, produce a book every three to four weeks. But kind of since then, I've slowed down my process a bit. I try to add more um, editorial uh, 
elements to it, a lot more proofreading, make sure that the books are really a good, valuable reading experience. So I'm more concerned now with the quality of the reading experience instead of just a certain speed. But yeah, I definitely transition over into uh, from focusing on writing for a blog just to focus on writing for the Kindle books. I love that. And, and what are the things that I've looked at and I've seen that your pace on Amazon has slowed down or slowed down quite a bit this year, it looks like. Yes. Or this year, meaning 2015, this past year. Um, but I think of it in terms of a startup business. And in a startup yeah. business, you are cranking um, not 24 hours a day. It's more like 48, 72, 100 and <laughs> something hours a day to get something established. And then after you get it established, you don't stop working on it, um, particularly if it's a labor of love. Um, but you, you hone your skills, you fine tune, and you get into more of a, a sustainable balance. And it sounds like you're doing that, that you're finding more of that rhythm. Does that sound yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and one major thing that's happening with my life is uh, I just got married. Uh, we're expecting our first son in about two months. So I'm, I'm laughing because <laughs> Jessica, she, she looked at my, it's my wife, and she's the producer of the show. She looked at, at uh, that you slowed down a little bit on the Kindles, and she goes, is he married? Does he have any kids yet? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no I, I definitely have to be now mindful because we're going to, it's, it seems like two or three appointments a week at this point with the Lamas and uh, the various uh, doctor's appointments. And I'm sure once, uh, once our son comes, it's going to be a lot more time required. So I, I really have to focus now on my 80-20. I have to figure out those 80% uh, results activities and just focus on that and just learn not to... Uh, waste like i would say that's a good given day i waste usually an hour on stuff that maybe i shouldn't be doing myself or i could outsource or i guess the point here is i'm really trying to refine uh, what i do on a daily basis to the point where all i'm doing is the higher level activity stuff i find that fascinating because you really are an expert on this you have many books on on habit stacking on routines on on all of these things and yet all of us have areas have the um what would it be um like where you need to put your thumb in the dike areas where the water is yeah. coming out of yeah definitely actually um if you don't mind a little bit on the spot coaching you, you were talking about uh the video editing mm -hmm. or the podcast editing well i would i would as soon as possible try to outsource that like i i have my va she's completely trained to upload everything the lips in and she does all this stuff kind of all or all on her own i just I, I spent the time training her so maybe not now but i would say sometime in the future you should really try to like get that nailed down where you're not wasting those two to three hours uh, going through each episode, because I'm sure that's a huge time sink. Yeah, it's, it's something that we've thought of. And what we haven't determined yet is, and I'm learning to let go more and let go more, is actually the process during the interview so that I have the quality and notes so mm -hmm. that I can share with people and have somebody who, um, it's trust in my skills. Yeah, it's trust in my skills, and that is coming rapidly. And and we've even had people suggested uh, outsourcing, um, f surprisingly from China. And that's that's not necessarily where we want to go with it because I'm not sure what the language skills will be. But you can get very affordable outsourcing solutions. Yes. So so that will be. And and I think you did hit for all of our audience, which is oftentimes we think in any position of life, I can't afford to get help in here on this. Yeah. And if you look at it differently, particularly if you can find a way to bring in a, a little bit of side income, you can't afford not to, that you need to focus. Like you're saying, tell me if I'm wrong here, you need to focus on the 80% that's making you money and the 20% yes. get rid of, or actually it's the reverse. You need to focus on the 20% that's making money, hike the rest of it. Exactly. And I've gotten the point that there's some things that are done in my business. I have no idea how to, how to do it. I just know my uh, virtual assistant. I do have a uh, for full-time virtual assistant, which I found from a, a virtual staff finder. It's a uh, Filipino. Um, it's a Filipino firm uh, run by Chris Ducker, mm -hmm. but it's it's great, top-notch. They speak they speak perfect English. Now I know I'm giving a sales pitch for this, but this is really just something that's really helped my business. Uh, really, just I, there's just so much stuff I don't have, have to worry about at this point, and it's surprisingly affordable. So that's my little pitch for it. But I definitely find it it helps me focus on. Uh, writing, content creation, and uh, interacting with my um, with the people who follow me online. Those, for me, that's like the most important activities. Uh, I will take that pitch and I will probably <laughs> run with it because it is very important at this point because we look at what we do, and I think we all need to do that, and look at what you do that brings either the most quality in the day or brings in the income which gives you the freedom that you want in the day. And if it isn't one of those things and it's not something you're passionate about, 
then all it's doing is holding you back from the things you want to do. Yeah, exactly. I, as an example, I once tried to figure out how to design graphics for blog posts, and I realized that I will never be a good graphic designer. I, I, my writing is terrible. I just I don't have a lick of uh, artistic talent. So why would I even try stressing over trying to figure it out? Just go hire someone who does actually have these talents. So when it came to, I'm going to bring it, keep bringing it back to the to the Kindle because I want to try to think yes. of passive income for people here. But this is this is actually important, and it's it's building these habits. Um, it wasn't something you were good at at the first, but it was something you were excited about. Is that right? Uh, definitely, I, I like. I, I definitely enjoyed sharing my thoughts on a blog, but. It was very much a tough slog where you would write a blog, a piece of good blog content. People liked it. They shared it. But then at the end of the day, you have to wake up and create another piece of content. And the long-term strategy that they recommend is either you sell advertisements or you create an information product. It was just very, very much you're, you're creating content for some faraway goal. Whereas I found, I just found that uh, creating content for a Kindle book was it was more focused on a specific problem. You would help readers overcome that problem, and you'd also generate a decent income. So I was just excited about the possibility of just kind of creating these condensed, focused pieces of content on one particular problem, spending a lot of time, I would, well, not a lot of time, but it's a couple, couple of weeks working on it, mm-hmm. publishing it, and then you could go and move on to a next problem. So it really was a very much a um, kind of work hard and then you see the results of it pretty immediate. So it wasn't like a blog or, or running a podcast where it really is, you're just creating an insane amount of content and eventually you hope it'll pay off. It's more a more immediate results you would see. So, and then as you got started, it sounds like you weren't one of those who was struggling with uh, paralysis by analysis. You jumped in. Uh, like, yeah, you- I'm not good at paralysis but i i tend to have a what's that a ready fire aim approach to everything and wait wait let's have you say that again <laughs> ready fire aim that's really <laughs> kind of my it's it's a mantra that the people have uh, recommended before me but really i love that strategy because it, it just say all right here's something i kind of want to do instead of just analyzing and creating the perfect project list you just go try it and just you use feedback from it and just learn from there and just try to iterate so that's just I'm not saying it's a great strategy because you make a lot of mistakes along the way, but that's the best way I learned just by make, making heaps of mistakes. Well, I think uh, it's something we've talked about with a lot of guests on the show, and, and forgive me everybody who's heard this before, but you look at Babe Ruth, and in the year he hit the most home runs, oh, yeah. he also <laughs> struck out the most. Same with Kobe Bryant, most missed shots, and the year he's setting the league record. So there's something to be said about making those mistakes and making forward, we don't, uh, moving forward. We don't even need big steps. You're only talking maybe an hour a day, you were saying, for some of your writing. Yes. And, and you've got how many books now? Uh, I, I would say total, it gets a little bit vague with how many books. So I'd say 40-ish that I've written myself, but on Amazon, it's around 60-ish. Uh, and that's uh, bundles. And I tried to outsource a series of books, uh, children's books. That, that didn't really go anywhere. But I would say in total, I have about 63 or 64 properties on, on Amazon at this point. So I think that that is, that is huge. You can't state that enough how huge that is. But that wasn't coming from you doing marathon a day of eight or twelve hours no. of writing every day. I would say there there are definitely times where I spend four or five hours working on a book, but for the most part, it really has been an hour a day. Um, sometimes thirty minutes a day, just just to kind of make sure you're getting that mum, uh, muscle memory of just you're you're continued to working. You're continuing to work on the project and you're not missing a day. Uh, you're never breaking the chain is kind of the uh, expression that people use. I like that because I know for myself, probably for many others, when you do break that chain, one of the unintended consequences is the painful ramp back up yeah. of where in the world was I? Yeah, definitely. It's a momentum killer. Uh, and I, I sometimes uh, take weekends off now th- at this point, but way back at, uh, when I first got started, I would just do it every single day without fail. And just really, you almost don't have to think about what you do when you wake up and you start writing. It's just, all right, here's here's where I left off. Let me jump back into it because you're so immersed in the process itself. You, It's hard to kind of forget what you're working on. And even when you're not writing, the, the stuff's just still popping in your head and you're kind of uh, – um, thinking about what what kind of the next section that you want to write about, and just it's it's a great way to to maintain that consistency on a major project. Would you mind sharing? And people can probably blow it out larger than Kindles, but what your workflow is to write a book? It's uh, actually, I actually have a forty six part checklist. Uh, Holy smokes! I, yeah, but it's it's really it. I really am a firm believer of uh, David Allen's uh, getting David Allen getting, getting things, things done. done. Yep. and he really is uh, a firm believer instead of just 
writing, um, instead of just saying, all right, I have to do this project, it's write out each individual step. So it is each, some of the steps are just go look up seven keywords for the book or uh, go email this person about this. So it really is just a whole process flow that I have just uh, from getting an idea all the way to having the book fully launched and selling on Amazon. And I just, I print out one of these suckers every time I write a book and I just go down my list and uh, when I'm at the point of writing, I'm like, all right, did I do my outline? Did I do the, the index cards I used to form the backbone of the book? And I just cross them off and I just uh, write into my calendar or schedule, kind of like your your four o'clock uh, content creation block. Mm-hmm. I, I would do that where I just schedule stuff in my day to work on certain aspects of my business and usually it's some form of writing and I just make sure I'm just continuously working on that. And uh, next thing you know, I wake up and there's a published book and it, it just... It's not uh, it's not sexy, but it's just working through a process. Really, for me, it, it's always been very helpful to kind of know exactly what I need to do each ha- step of the way. Have you written a book on writing a book? Then, uh, yes, I have. Um, actually, two of them. One of them is I wrote this a couple years ago, so I, I haven't read it in a long time. I'm, I I think it's good. People seem to like it, but that's uh, how to write a book in twenty one days. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's one called Writing Habit Mastery. And I'll be honest, these are a couple years old, so. I, I feel like I've become a stronger writer since then, so I, I, I keep on meaning to go back over to those ones and uh, change around the uh, the content a bit. But I think the the, the foundation stuff is pretty uh, still pretty good. What I'm getting at is when will the book exist with the uh, the 46 steps on it for the rest of us? Oh, oh, that's um that's actually a giveaway through my website. If you just Fantastic. go to um, apchecklist.com, that's mm-hmm. the uh, that's a, a kind of ninja thing I do for my podcast. Uh, I always create simple, easy to remember uh, URLs for kind of the major things that you want to uh, tell people about. So, And that was AP Ninja? Uh, sorry, AP Checklist. AP Checklist. Okay, yes. perfect. So then um, can you walk us through what a, um, what a morning routine would be for you? Uh, it really varies. I, I kind of mix it up. But uh, right now for me, I just wake up um, anywhere from 6.30 to 7. I'm not a super early riser like some people, but I do try to get up uh, right around the time when my wife wakes up. So I'll drink a, um, actually, one of these drinks. Uh, I try to mix it up with different uh, types of fruits and vegetable drinks. Um, I will kind of uh, write, go over my goals. I'll write down the, my three most important things for the day. So that's just, all right, here the, uh, what would you call yours? The S- SMPs? The SMP, single- single minded purpose. Very similar to that. So here are the, the, it's usually one to three things that I absolutely positively have to complete by the day. Mm-hmm. And invariably one of those is a certain specific word count. So I will write 1,500 words today on X book. So it's really kind of written in the smart goal format. I will do this by the end of the day. And so I know exactly what I need to, to actually complete. So it's not just I will write for the day. It was I will write this word count. So there's that. I, I do um, try to update my the, the habits that I'm, that I'm currently tracking. Mm-hmm. I do a little bit of journaling, but I, I pretty much um, keep my morning routine now down to maybe about 15 minutes or so and then dive right into writing. Uh, I do sometimes, it's kind of been cold and snowy here, uh, so I, I kind of just switch my schedule over into going to the gym. So I'll, I will walk in the morning yeah. um, if it's not too snowy out or I'll go out to the gym, uh, go for my run. But I kind of am flexible when I do my exercise. I'm not one of those people who absolutely positively exercises in the morning. But a lot of times I just, I, I guess it comes from uh, cross country and track in high school and college. I just train my body to run at four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And I just haven't switched that routine for some reason ever since then. But um, yes, yeah, so, so, so pretty much it just focus on getting and being productive right in the morning. And then uh, do you take frequent breaks or get yourself moving or? Oh, yeah. Um, what I do a lot with my writing, pretty much with all my tasks now, is I, I'm a really firm believer in the Pomodoro technique. So that's the 25 minutes on of just uh, focus effort. You don't look at distractions. You don't go on Facebook, email, any of that. It's just 25 minutes in the zone working on something. Timer goes off. You get up from your chair. You walk around. You, you pace. You go get a cup of tea, uh, a drink or whatever. Uh, five minutes, you're just kind of just clearing your mind. You get back in the chair, you sit down, you do it for another 25 minutes. So I try to do at least a few of those for my writing. Mm-hmm. And for pretty much for the rest of my days, I break everything down in Pomodoros. And I actually, this is a little bit too obsessive in my opinion, but I actually track the amount of Pomodoros every month. So I know that I did 50 blocks of writing each month or uh, 25 conversations each month. So I actually really try to get a, a good understanding of where I'm spending most of my time. And I do this every month. I do like a monthly analysis where I'm just uh, seeing, did I spend most of my time in my 80% results activity? So am I spending in content creation, 
uh, interacting with um, people that follow me online, uh, creating, going on interviews like this podcast, the stuff that really helps uh, my business or am I just spending uh, two hours in at what I call administrative, just going into email and just answering a bunch of stuff that could be uh, outsourced to somebody else. So I really try to use this, uh, this Pomodoro technique on a macro level where I'm really st- making sure I'm spending my time where I need to spend my time. So are you using uh, Excel for doing that, or have you found a way? I'm not even familiar with Evernote. Maybe we can go there next. How are you tracking this? I actually do. I, I have used Evernote in the past. I just find that Evernote, for me, is just better for uh, gathering ideas. Mm-hmm. I actually do have it in an Excel spreadsheet. I just keep the Excel spreadsheet open every day. and just called. Uh, it's really a, a, a really fancy um, name for it. It's called Master Time Tracker. So it's a, <laughs> it's just open all the time, and I just uh, every time I'm done with the task, like I, I wrote down what time we started this interview, and mm-hmm. sure enough, after afterwards, I'll just write down. All right, I spent about two point five blocks of time doing a podcast interview, and and it it's it seems a little bit too obsessive, but for me, it just really gain, helps me gain clarity on where I'm spending my time. It makes me wonder if you can turn it into a game, and if things are worth various points. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I I've actually had that thought, but. What I don't want to do is make myself feel like I always have to work. So I'm trying to also use it as a, as a way of saying, all right, I did about 300 blocks of time a month. That's good enough. I shouldn't be doing more. I should be spending time uh, with my wife now or in a couple of months with my kid. I shouldn't be working this much. So hopefully I will use this down the road to maybe figure out what I can eliminate from my schedule and not have it uh, have a negative impact on my business. I love it. What are um, a few key pieces of... Um routine building, habit building that you have that we may not have thought of that have been really important for you? Uh, for me, it's really just focusing on one, building one new habit at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I find that the, the New Year's resolution model where people just have a, a laundry list of, I'm going to do these seven things starting 2016 and this year is going to be different, it's going to be perfect. And then they get to about day three or four and just everything comes crashing down. They get um, they get yelled at by their boss, they're tired, they just want to go home and eat junk food even though they swore off junk food. So a lot of this relates to um, kind of the, the willpower concept as talked about by uh, uh, Baumeister. Actually, I'll, I'll just remind me after this interview, I'll give you a link to the book. It's just a really good book about willpower and he just talks a lot about ego depletion and how when you're, you're trying to add new things to your schedule, you really can only focus on one new thing just because you're just there's just so much other stuff that's drawing from your uh, willpower. So the point there is I, I really firmly believe that you should focus on one new habit at a time. And actually um, what's really helped me is a concept came up um, that my uh, buddy Stephen Geist came up with. And he really is a firm believer of many habits. So his kind of mantra is to set really what you call stupidly simple uh, objectives. So instead of trying to go out and write 1,500 words a day like, like I've uh, gotten to the point that I can do, it's better just to say, all right, my goal for today is to write a paragraph. And it it sounds so simple, but that's the point. It's just you're building that muscle memory of accomplishing every single day. And yes, you could write one paragraph, but you'll find that maybe nine times out of ten, you'll want to write a little bit more once you get into the routine. But maybe there's that one day where things just aren't going well. You write your one paragraph. You say, oh, wow, that's, that's all I can do today. So you just get up get out of the chair and just say, oh, I, I did what I had to do for the day. And that's just what's more important long term for habits is just to build that kind of consistency instead of trying to hit a certain goal. And I just I find that's really good for a habit that's brand new that you're really not too familiar with. It's just better kind of almost lowball your expectations and then build up from there. I love that because one of the things it does is su- success begets success. Yes. And, and, you know, if you don't hit your goals, you're even less likely to go back for it the next day. You got your tail between your legs. You're not feeling so good about yourself. If yeah, you're, woohoo, works. I hit my goals, <laughs> it's more fun. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, and I, I, I find my, with myself that the habits I'm trying to build, if I set a too lofty of a goal when I don't hit that goal, I'm, just, I'm, real, I'm mad at myself and, and it, it's almost emotionally draining when you don't, when you don't do what you, you're going to uh, go out. You don't do what you said you're going to go out to do. So what is, uh, what is a goal that you have right now that you're working on? Um, for me, it's just getting better at um, video interviews. So I just have simple goals of just cre- try to create one video a day. And mm-hmm. I'm actually not showing these to anyone. It's just me sitting down talking to the camera for uh, one to two minutes. And I'm just trying to get better at um, kind of the way I present information. And if you haven't noticed, I kind of stammer, I kind of stumble over my words sometimes. So I'm trying to get better at that. I'm trying to 
learn elocution and it's a just for me it's a very much an iterative process so i'm just trying to work at that on a daily basis do you have a a, a, a pet cat dog teddy bear anything that you use as your audience no i do not uh we don't have animals uh, so i have my my wife but she's she's here not she's not really here most of the day so it's just me in my office by myself that is when you get good at that you will be great because that that takes some work yes it does <laughs> So I, I applaud you for that one. Uh, what are some big goals of yours coming up? Uh, for me, really, the 2016 is, there's a couple of projects I'm, I'm really focusing on. And one of them is a uh, co-authored book with uh, someone that's pretty, actually, it's a person that's on your podcast. I can't really talk about it right now at this point, but it's someone who has a pretty big following. I'm co-authoring a book with this person. Uh, so I'm focusing on that over the next court, uh, next couple of months. And the information course I created about self-publishing, I'm trying to really ramp that up. And we just finished our launch. Actually, uh, it's closing today. But I want to kind of close the doors, make sure customers are happy, and then really blow it up, really make that as, as big as possible. So those are really right now my two uh, major goals for 2016, just kind of higher level stuff instead of the um, the continuing just write, writing one book after another. I want to kind of make sure that what I'm producing now is a, a, a level higher than what I've been doing in the past. Awesome. So going from there, maybe taking this last little bit, can you talk with us about passive income and whether it's something, I, I guess, first off, can is this something anybody can look at? Uh, yes, it definitely. It really depends on the passive income stream. And I know there are a lot of people out there who, who like to describe that their particular model works for everyone. But to be honest, for, for, for what we do, I, I think it's important that you have to at least enjoy writing. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of um, there was a lot of buzz around self publishing as you don't have to do anything. You can just outsource the whole process and you'll make piles of money. That really isn't the case. And I would say pa passive income definitely is a possibility, but for the most part, at first, passive income isn't that passive. And I'm sure you're uh, you're a good example <laughs> of that you you work your butt off, and yeah. I can tell you work your butt off. I work my butt off. But the idea is down the road when you do that work, uh, when, you, when you put forth a lot of effort, eventually things become passive. Uh, I know that I travel about four months out of every year. I, I've gone to a number of countries. I, I enjoy life. But when I'm working, I'm definitely, um, definitely, uh, what's the expression? Nose to, to the, the gr grindstone. Nose, nose to the grindstone. I always butcher expressions. So yes, yeah, very much uh, nose to the grindstone. I, I, t I tend to work about 40, 50 hours a week. So like most people. And it, but when I do work, I'm making sure I'm just focusing on the major activity. So uh, as far as passive income, it, you really have to kind of find something that's related to your particular passions or skill set. So if by your nature you're a writer, then uh, self-publishing is a good uh, model. But if you're uh, personality driven, if you really enjoy talking to people and, and doing interviews and uh, what you do, a podcast, that's a great avenue. Or if you're kind of behind the scenes, you don't really want to build an audience. And uh, I know that people are doing a lot of good things with building an e-commerce business. So mm -hmm. I would say just go towards your strengths instead of trying to do a complete overhaul of your personality just to, to, to fit one particular model. I would just say focus on something that resonates with you as a person. Would you say try to become an expert in something that interests you? Or Oh, definitely. I, absolutely. I, I find that nowadays you really can't shortcut the process. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that there's a lot to be said about gaining expertise. And just one way uh, to do that is, uh, get, uh, you're a perfect example of this, is you could do a number of interviews with people in a particular market, uh, start to learn the lessons that they consistently say, and you can just build up your expertise by, just by networking and reaching out to people in your industry. And I, I find as long as you know one thing and you, you talk about that one thing, you can kind of build on that skill set, and then you, just, you get better over time, and then whatever uh, product or... Um, uh, content platform you have will get better over time as well. I, I love that, and it, it makes me think of the Silicon Valley, uh, what is it, parable, analogy, uh, expression, I guess expression, which is build the plane on the runway. So, or, <laughs> or, or they'll, say, they'll say build the plane on the runway, or um, also we had a guest on, Richard Taubinger, who first shared that with us, or um, uh, Kamal Ravikant from Silicon oh, Valley. Yeah. I like he, him. He says, he's awesome. He, he said, um, grow wings, jump off the cliff and grow, grow your wings on the way down. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> it, it gets you moving, but... Uh, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> there is a, an extreme sense, sense of urgency when we do it that way. Yeah, actually, uh, come to think of it, uh, for this course, the uh, video course I just mentioned, 
we gave ourselves a pretty much a two month deadline to do 80 videos a high. It was a lot of effort. Oh God, and we've, we've done and this. we made it happen. It, it's it's surprising when you give yourself a little bit of time. I guess that's uh, Parkinson's law when you that work expands the amount that you allot to it. Exactly. So if we gave ourselves a condensed deadline, we made it happen. But it was oof, it was rough. Um, I'm fairly bullish on YouTube for the future. I think it's going to be big. What are your feelings? I agree with you, and that's actually why I'm trying to get better at this particular skill set. I'm just um, I'm an introvert writer by nature, but I'm trying to at least get out of my comfort zone. But I I do know that society is leaning towards more short piece of content towards video. They're not really. We're not really training a whole generation of readers, unfortunately, but that's just the way things are. So I do believe that YouTube, uh, Facebook video is going to be huge. Um, Twitter video, I, I, uh, what's that, Vine? Um, I know that video is going to be a major medium, and that's how people are going to digest information moving forward. So I, I totally agree with you. I think YouTube is going to get even bigger than they, they, cur than they currently are. Yeah, I have a feeling we're in, a, we're in 159 countries with our show on audio. I have a feeling we're going to actually expand and really blow past that. I don't know what, how many countries there are, but that our YouTube is actually going to take off and exceed that. We, we just started playing with Periscope. Um, oh, nice. And, and we'll play with Meerkat as well. The funny thing, it's, it's really interesting what happens when you go from this year where we can do a certain amount of editing. If there's an oops, I've got a, a, a nice, you know, a little snip and I can get that <laughs> done right now. Um, but when it's live, it's out there. And so I've only played with Periscope uh, one full interview and tried it another few times. And that one, when it's out there, it's out there. Yeah. It's, it's forever. <laughs> And it's very, very scary. It definitely changes. Um, I found myself a little bit rigid. I'm going to have to play with that one. Um, I found myself, I don't know, on some level, maybe this is on a subconscious level, guarded as, and trying to be careful. Um, but I think Periscope and Meerkat are going to be huge in the future. Yeah, I'm just curious about which one's actually going to, 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 to really um, rise above the other one. I know that uh, Meerkat was Meerkat first, and then Periscope just because it's attached to Twitter. That then it really blew up. But it, I, I'm not too sure. I'm which not came sure, first. but Meerkat was Germany first. Oh, okay. So and and then they came over here, and so I'm not sure who st who started the horse race. Yeah, but the, I can see the benefit of that uh, live streaming to a direct audience. So, to, to me, that that idea sounds scary. <laughs> that you're, it's not even the webinar where you're sitting behind a computer screen. You're talking live to a group of people and they, whatever happens, happens. And they could see, if you read something you don't like, they'll see your expression. Oh, no, I don't like that. And uh, I don't know. It gives me uh, heaps of anxiety. But, you know, I guess it's, it's like a skill set like anything else. Yeah. And, and a webinar, and we're, we're going to be starting, we have an Inspire Nation Club, which we're starting shortly. And so we'll have like a, a weekly webinar. But, but that's, that's those that you know, for example, in a sense, um, it's your community. And, and most people aren't hitting the record button for the whole thing. This is blasted. Periscope or Meerkat is blasted out there. They can find it on your Twitter feed. They can probably find it elsewhere. And it will just live forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a scary thought. But <laughs> so, I do agree this is the way society is going. So you have to kind of get with the times or get uh, left behind. Yeah. So, so we'll play with that. And we'll get to where we're probably a, a live show on a daily basis, which will be interesting for the guests as well. Because we'll, <laughs> we'll, right now, it's already an experience um, where you have to work with many of the guests to, to help them relax. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. And because we have that added element of video, but now to tell them video and live and they're <laughs> deer in headlights. So yeah. bef before we begin to wrap things up, um, maybe you can give us a few key habits or, or techniques that we can use that we may not have thought of that can start to transform our day. See, I, I, I really am a basics person. I don't have anything that's fancy. So what basics I mentioned, is good. I love your book. For that, for that <laughs> matter, let's let it get it out. Habit stacking, I love it. Drinking water, I love it. <laughs> so, so I, I am a very much a believer in it's the simple little things that you do that make all the difference in the world. Yeah, so I, I would say that uh, you want to find a few things that you know could make a measurable difference in your day. So 
um, I guess the what the one um, analogy I use is if you know that your partner likes nice, loving notes, then write one every single day and actually put it in as part of your routine. So, I would say one habit that really helps me is the habit stacking. So, group a series of uh, small habits, uh, try to put them in some sort of routine. So, this could be either be your morning routine. Uh, an afternoon routine or an evening routine and just schedule it into your day. Just make sure you just go through this process. I, I would say another habit that's really beneficial to me is find that one thing for your uh, career mm -hmm. or for your job or business or whatever. Uh, focus on that first thing in the morning so when you get to the office or you get, sit down to your desk in the morning, do that before anything else. So don't don't open up Facebook, don't open up your email account, don't risk, don't start the day in reactive mode uh, instead be proactive are you are you also along those lines is it is it um, I call it the Costanza effect which is uh, George Costanza in uh, Seinfeld he got really good when he stopped doing what he wanted to do and did the <laughs> opposite and so I try to front load the day with what I not what I know I need to get done rather than necessarily what I enjoy doing most Exactly. I, I'll be honest. Waking up in the morning and knowing the first thing you have to do is right. It sometimes is not the fun. It's not what I really want to do. Sometimes I just want to check stats and look at all these different pretty things that happen while I was asleep. Yep. But it's just better to um, to because you know that's as important. That it's important long term to focus on that one thing. Um, but also as far as habits, I would say without fail, exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you, you drum that point home with uh, Inspire Nation. And I haven't checked out your uh, interview with Dean Carnassus, but I'd actually, I'd, I'd, I'd love that guy. I, I truly love everything he's done. He's just an awesome, positive person. So you will, uh, you will love that one, and I need to go back to it as well because I've got a, I've got a big running year planned, and I, I don't know if you know my history or not. I've got two titanium no. femurs, two titanium hips, um, <sighs> and and I'm running again and somewhat running well, and I think it's going to be a, a big year for me running. And so I need to go back and listen to his interview too because it, that interview is pure motivation. That that guy is oh, pure yeah. motivation. Oh yeah, no, I read I read his book. Uh, but I will say this: that uh, don't suffer from comparatitis for people that are, that are listening to. Don't sit and listen to the interview with Dean Carnassus and feel like you're not accomplishing anything if you're not running a marathon every single week for a year or something. That was the coolest thing about Dean. He is <laughs> or, so or, sorry every day, single day. It was fifty days in a row, right? Yeah, he, but he's so down to earth. <laughs> yeah, that that he makes you feel if you went out and did a mile. Heck, if you started and you did a hundred yards, that you're on top of the world. So oh, that's good. Yeah, I was I was dumbfounded in his interview that he was not uh, ego. I had this preconceived notion, which I I checked at the curb, of well, is he going to be really this or is he going to be really that? He was the most down to earth, humble. Be where you are. Start with what you've got. You can do this, guy. Oh, that's awesome. No, that that he he seems like a positive person in his book. So it's good to hear that he was in a podcast setting as well. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty awesome. So you just mentioned something. It, it kind of veers off track, but, but I, I want to come back to it. You said that you, when you get up and you do the difficult thing in the morning, you don't want to look at all the pretty things that happen, that, that have happened overnight, which makes me wonder about um, positive outlook that you have, or I, I know you've written about affirmations. What are you doing to train your mind? Uh, for the most part, I... I used to do affirmations, I kind of eased away from them and actually keep on meaning to start into them um, mm -hmm. again. But I just find for me, I just, what, it's, it really is no uh, rocket, it's not rocket science, I just focus on what I need to get done and I just find that if I get that done first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. I'm generally a happy camper. I'm like, all right, I, I've got everything that's really important to be done. I don't really have to stress out, just make sure I just, I do the work, make sure I go through the rest of my list that I have to get done by the end of the day, all the kind of uh, minor things. But for the most part, I, I, I find myself when I, I keep myself fairly busy. I, I remain fairly positive. It's it's when I have nothing to do. It when it, it's when I start to get bored and, or down on myself. I just kind of keep myself occupied. Yeah, entrepreneurial syndrome. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's I I have trouble relaxing, and we tend to go on these long month long vacations sometimes. And by week three or four, I'm like, I get. I don't. I, I actually sat in Hawaii, kind of bored out of my mind, because like I, I want to do something. I'm I'm kind of just sitting there on the beach, oh, which no. is. <laughs> this is the, obviously don't tell that to my wife <laughs> <laughs> well we we just came back from living on on maui for about three and a half close to four years oh wow okay and and it's it's a fantastic place to live i love it love it love it but there's something about the pace there that actually makes it really difficult to get things done 
and yeah. and if you if you're somebody who likes creating content it can actually be challenged because um, Mother Maui, so to speak, would kick our butt. You want to get things done, um, and then somebody's pulling you to the beach, or it's a beautiful <laughs> day, and you want to go on the boat there. Or something. I mean, these these are you know bad problems to have. But but the fact is, if you have this burning desire, which so many of us do, to do something more, and and then it's all beach time, then you're like, wait, wait, how do I how do I do that? So. Yeah. And, and maybe that's a that's a uh, one of I've got just a couple questions, but maybe that's one of the remaining ones for you. Is we start our day, we do the difficult things first. What else can we do to ensure we're not just going through the daily grind? Oh, I would say uh, schedule other things, act, other activities in your day. So I make sure I schedule in my uh, running. And actually, I don't even I don't even use the word schedule because I just know that. Five, it's happening. Five, six o'clock, it's going to happen. I, I just don't – I have my go bag in my car, which is pretty much a bag full of clothing for any element or any type of environment. So I just know I always have my uh, my, my bag that's ready to, to exercise. So if, even if I go to Starbucks, I have something with me where I can do a run anywhere. So as far as that, um, I make sure – I have a, a nice lunch. I sit down. I'll read a book during lunch, and it's kind of relaxing time. And um, and I make sure I stop work at a certain time every day and then spend the rest of the evening with my wife. So I'm very – kind of regimented and mindful about uh, almost, I'd pretty much structure my life like a nine to five job because I know that's uh, my wife's a teacher. She tends to come home around five or six o'clock as well. So I just uh, schedule my time around her her schedule. And just from there, I just, every every when I'm not working, I make sure I'm completely off and I'm not looking on my phone uh, 24 seven. I'm just focused kind of in the zone on uh, good activities. I- I'm impressed by this. And the reason I'm impressed <laughs> is is you've gotten so much done and, and, and we can just look at, at how many uh, Kindles you've made, products you've made. And I'm not sensing um, crazy pushing yourself into the ground. No, I, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I've, seen, I've seen examples of that growing up that people that really push themselves, they really enjoy their job. But um, at the end of the day, sometimes they seem to regret how, how much time they spend at work and not necessarily with the people in their life. So. I do try to balance it, and sometimes it's painful. Sometimes I'd, I'd rather be working, but I know that uh, long-term wise, it's it's really benef- beneficial not to uh, try to work like the crazy entrepreneur that, that we've talked about before. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, a wrap-up question we like to ask all of our guests at the end, which is, or toward the end, what brings you the greatest happiness or what I call the woohoo <laughs> factor? Uh, that's a tough one to answer. I, I don't know. Um, I would say it's it's I like I like change. I like doing different things. I find that myself uh, doing the same thing over and over. Then I get bored easily. So I like working really hard. And I actually do enjoy working. But then I like taking that time off, going for a hike or uh, a run with my wife, or uh, going visiting somewhat someplace else, or just going traveling, uh, taking a weekend away. So I find just a constant change of pace of just going from working really hard to playing really hard. That kind of that that never have never. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I always have something new to do, mm-hmm. I guess, is, is a good uh, best answer for that. Well, it makes sense. And from a, a hunting gathering perspective, I think we always wanted to be out oh, yeah. exploring. Definitely. Yeah, I, I definitely I, I have um, ADD too much. I, I just get bored with doing the same thing over and over. Squirrel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, I'm I'm with you, and uh, and my wife even to to a greater extent. She wouldn't consider herself ADD, but if we went on the same run or the same trail time after time, she's she's like I'm done with it. I need something new. <laughs> she needs something new to explore. Yeah, so, exactly. any last words of wisdom you would have for people? Uh, I would say just kind of get back to what I said before. If you want to learn something new or do something, build a new habit. Just focus on that one habit. Set moderate goals. And just focus more on doing on a daily basis instead of hitting a specific uh, metric at first. Fantastic. And uh, I've got to ask, and I'm not sure whether we'll include this or not, um, but it's been fascinating to me that you can get books for free if you join for $9.99. How is Kindle Unlimited for authors these days? Uh, that's a whole other story. Uh, for as a reader, I love it. I, mm-hmm. I think it's great. It's it's. I, I read so many good books uh, from Kindle Un- Kindle Unlimited. But for authors, it really has dropped the price down that they get the compensation down. Uh, so if you're a nonfiction author, you really only get about fifty cents for fifty cents to a dollar, depending on the length of your nonfiction book. And 
the people who benefit most are the, the fiction writers with longer books in the three to five hundred page range. But even then, they get about um, I think it's a dollar fifty to two dollars, which really isn't the same level of compensation they would get for a a sale. So. I still think it's a work in progress. I'm, I have mixed feelings about it, but I, I love it as a customer. Yeah, and, and I, I couldn't agree more. And so uh, over the last couple of days, I've been going through like a dozen of your different books, and, oh, nice. and, uh, which, is, which is great for you because that's like 50 cents a time. And, yes. and uh, uh, it's great for, for the reader. And I can't recommend for people uh, out there enough to go read a bunch of your books because one naturally leads to the next, naturally needs to the next. You, you hit a point of saturation which you go, okay, I need to take action on the first basic steps yes. now. <laughs> So, uh, actually, where can people go to find out more and to check out your blog and everything you've got going on? Um, I would say uh, two places. So, um, my website is Develop Good Habits, and that's where I talk about all the different habit stuff. And uh, you can find a link at the top to all my books. And um, if people are interested in self-publishing, they can just go, uh, if they're listening on iTunes or Stitcher, just go type in Authority Self-Publishing. And that kind of talks more about my business. So, if you want to learn about habits, go to the Habit website. If you want to learn about self-publishing, go find the podcast. So, I, I know it's probably a, a varied group of audience, so I try to mix it up a little bit and uh, give them two I'll, different I'll offers. Say, go to both and or go to inspirenationshow.com and we'll have links to both of them. Oh, wonderful. So we'll get them over there. Well, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. I'm inspired by what you do. Um, so uh, one of the things for everybody in the audience that uh, Jessica and I have been working on is uh, cranking up some books on our own. And, and I think Steve's work is going to be really helpful for that. And if you're considering it, uh, I would highly recommend go to his website, check it out, and uh, take those baby steps. It can be... It, you really can cross the country with just one step at a time. So thank you so much. For everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying be well, have fun, develop good habits, and shine bright. Woohoo! Bye, guys. Bye guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, like below. Also, leave your comments. Have some real fun with it. Subscribe to our channel where you're going to get more great videos, more interviews coming up. And check out our website, inspirenationshow.com. That's where you'll find tips, blogs, information, videos you won't find anywhere else, and useful and helpful resources to really help you kickstart your life and to shine bright. Thanks so much again. Thank you for your support. Like, 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 comment, subscribe. See the website. Thanks so much and have fun. Of course, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>